Welcome back, one and all, to the latest edition of the Future So Right podcast. I'm your host, Pete Beal, and as always, this is a Green Flame Press production. Uh, we're back, back from our brief break. If you didn't tune into the last episode, I noted we were going to take a little bit longer off in between episodes. And the reason for that was I wanted to prep some NaNoWriMo related content for you. So the focus of the two episodes of October is going to be the upcoming NaNoWriMo, which of course is short for National Novel Writing Month, which takes place in the month of November. So here's how I'm thinking we're going to structure these episodes, is this first episode is going to be mainly focused on the planning aspect what's going to take place before NaNoWriMo actually begins. And then the second episode is going to be tips and advice and such that will hopefully prove useful during the month of November while you're actually going through this process. So first, I just want to touch a little bit on what NaNoWriMo actually is. I'm guessing if you're listening to this, you're already familiar, so I'll just do a real quick overview. NaNoWriMo, as I said a few seconds ago, stands for National Novel Writing Month, and the idea is pretty straightforward. The goal is to write a novel in a month, or more accurately, it's to write 50,000 words in a month. That is the goal. NaNoWriMo has an official website where you can track your progress and share it with friends. Uh, I'll link that down in the description below so you can check that out. And in fact, I'm going to go out to their website now, because if I'm going to explain what NaNoWriMo is, why not just take it straight from uh, the source? So National Novel Writing Month began in 1999 as a straightforward challenge to write 50,000 words of a novel in 30 days. So this starts now every year on November 1st, and hundreds of thousands of people around the world begin to write. Hopefully they end at 50,000 words at the end of the month. Now, I went ahead and participated in NaNoWriMo last year, and I did manage to hit the 50,000 word mark, so I can assure you it is possible to do it. I was actually, um, I know in my last episode I had said I was undecided on participating this year. I had actually made the decision that I was going to, and then a, a situation came up and I'm actually not going to be participating myself this year. It's just not really plausible for me at this point this year. Uh, my day job is just throwing some curveballs at me where I just simply wouldn't have the necessary amount of time. But if you are planning on participating, I'm going to use my experience from last year and hopefully provide you with some good advice to set yourself up for success. So why would we participate in this? Well, beyond the obvious of it's pretty cool to get 50,000 words written in a month, it's a great opportunity for the writing community. They really seem to band together during the month of November in terms of supporting themselves. And oftentimes, if you're somebody that sometimes has a hard time finding motivation for yourself, seeing other people succeed and reach these goals can drive you to do this yourself. So. NaNoWriMo is something that I highly suggest every writer takes part in at least once. And it might not be for you. You might get a week in and decide, you know, this really isn't for me. And that's okay. It's okay to set it aside and decide that this isn't what works best for you. But I highly recommend everybody give it a shot at least one time. So I think that's enough of an introduction to what NaNoWriMo is and what some of the potential benefits might be for you. Let's dive right into some prep work that you can do before NaNoWriMo starts that will hopefully set you up for success once November comes. The first thing I would urge anyone who's considering and participating in NaNo to do is establish your writing space now. And what I mean by that is I think this will work best if you have a dedicated spot just for writing. And the great thing about this is, is it's not exclusive to NaNoWriMo. This is something that I think will ultimately help you on your journey going forward regardless. So 
So what should your writing area have? Well, basically it should have anything that you need while you are writing. So for example, uh, say you're somebody who listens to music while you write, and you listen to that music on your cell phone. Have a phone charger right there at your desk. This way, if your phone battery starts to get low, you're not getting up, going out looking for a phone charger, walking back to your desk. Anytime you get up from your writing is an opportunity to get distracted. Obviously, you should have your writing device handy, whether that be a desktop computer, a laptop computer, whatever you use to write, along with, um, if it's something portable, the avenue to charge it. If you have a, I use a wireless mouse, so I always have my wireless mouse handy and a mouse pad. Um, second of all, your writing space should really be comfortable. It should be the kind of place where you're okay to go sit down for a few hours and work. Ideally, it'll be quiet. There's not going to be a lot of background noise to distract you. Uh, so, I'll just talk a little bit about my space to give you an idea of what I mean. and You can adjust this based on what works best for you. So for my writing space, it's in the lower floor of my house, and I've sort of created a little den, so to speak, for myself down here with a lot of bookshelves. I have my TV and my gaming systems hooked up on the other side of the room. And then in this little nook, I have my desk. Now I built my desk myself because I wasn't able to find a desk that had everything that I needed. So I went out and built my own. I took an old closet door that uh, I wasn't using and I painted it and I bought some in uh, adjustable desk legs from Ikea and then I also put I bought two sets of drawers that are the exact same height and I put those under the desk as well for extra stability plus storage for anything that I have at my desk that I need I keep my laptop here I have my printer overall it has everything I need I do need to make some adjustments because I haven't made any changes to it since I started doing this podcast. I need to figure out how to arrange things. When I record this, I end up sort of rigging everything together so that I can record. I'd like to have a more permanent solution down here. But that's what works for me. It works for me because it's sort of isolated from the rest of the house. So for example, if I'm down here writing or I'm down here recording my podcast, I can't hear my wife talking. She's upstairs working right now. Um, my pets, I can close them out if they're being rambunctious. So they're not uh, bothering me. I don't have kids, so that's not an issue. Usually I'll allow one or two of the cats to come in. And as long as they behave, they get to stay. I have plenty of lighting so I can see what I'm doing. I have a phone charger, although I try not to look at my phone too much while writing. I also have a mini fridge down here, so I keep that stocked with a few different uh, beverages that help me with my writing process. If I um, need something to drink or a little snack, I can grab it from my mini fridge so I don't have to go all the way up to the kitchen. So you get the general idea. This is going to be a little bit personal based on your specific needs, but play around with it a little bit now before NaNoWriMo starts and figure out what works best for you. Where's your best location? Where are you getting the most work done? Where do you have the most peace and quiet? And how can you customize it so that it fits every one of your needs? So if you're going to write 50,000 words in 30 days, how much time is that going to take? Let's put it into a little perspective. If you were to write every single day in the month of November, on average, you would have to write 1,666 words every day to hit the mark of 50,000 words. Now, for some writers, this might not be an issue. For others, this might be a really tall task. So how do we go about tackling this? Well, I really, really believe in the value of scheduling, especially during NaNoWriMo. I've talked about it on this podcast a few times. I highly recommend going out and getting yourself a calendar or a daily planner and figure out how much time you have to dedicate to writing each day. Maybe you can plan out the whole month in advance. Maybe you have to plan out a week at a time. 
but get yourself a schedule and stick to it. This is going to give you the best chance of success. So examine your daily schedule and fit your writing time. I would recommend trying to do as much of it in one block as possible because I find when I sit down and write, the longer I have, the more momentum I build and the faster I end up working. So if your best time to write is early in the morning, maybe wake up a couple of hours before you have to go to work. If it's in the evening, maybe you stay up a little later than you normally do to get those extra words in. You alone can determine what the best option for you is in terms of scheduling, but I think that not scheduling is the worst possible option that anyone can take. So we've talked about scheduling out our time, and there's another tool that we can use as writers to set ourselves up for success during NaNoWriMo. And it's one of my favorite tools, and it's a lot of people's least favorite tools. I'm talking, of course, about outlining the story in advance. <laughs> and I did a full episode on outlining in my very first episode of this podcast, so I'm not going to go into a whole half-hour spiel on this, but I will sort of cover some cliff notes, so to speak, on why I think this is important. I think outline can help with any writing project, but during NaNoWriMo, it becomes even more helpful. And we just addressed how daunting of a task NaNoWriMo is, over 1,600 words per day. So how does an outline help with this? Well, I think this is a bit on the obvious side. If you need to get in around 1,700 words per day, you don't have time to be sitting around staring at your screen trying to figure out, okay, where do I want to go with this next? You need to have a set beginning, middle, and end already formed for your story, and it's going to really allow you to move through this first draft a lot quicker than if you're sitting there flying by the seat of your pants, trying to think this up as you go. I can tell you with 100% certainty that last year had I not outlined my project for NaNoWriMo, there is no way I would have hit the 50,000 word mark. It would not have happened. So while I know a lot of you groaned the second the O word came out of my mouth, it's something I strongly advise you to consider if you're truly going to try to tackle writing 50,000 words in the month of November. And listen, an outline doesn't have to be horribly detailed. The way my outlines are is I have a brief summary of what happens in each chapter of my book, about three to four sentences. Some people have whole pages dedicated to each chapter of their book, and if that's what works for you, that's great. But I don't need that much, and I don't think most people do. You might not need as much detail as I do. You might just have a few basic bullet points. What happens at the beginning? What happens in the middle? What happens at the end? But I think if you go in without any sort of plan at all, you're setting yourself up for failure. So at the very least, give outlining a long, hard thought. I think it's definitely a worthwhile investment of your time during the month of October to bring yourself uh, better production during the month of November. Just something to think about. You know, every year I see a lot of advice go around about how to succeed at NaNoWriMo. And there's something that I think gets overlooked a lot. And it's, to put it simply, you need to have realistic perspectives on your own limits. Some people might be able to sit down and crank out 2,000 words a day for 30 days straight. And that's good for them, but that might not necessarily be the case for you. Nobody knows your abilities and your limits better than you do. 
One thing I would stress, we talked about scheduling earlier, plotting out our time during the month of November. Make sure you're giving yourself some downtime. If you push too hard, especially in the early stages of November, what's likely to happen is you might burn out and end up not hitting your goal. And in fact, you could end up falling very well short of your goal. So assess your schedule very carefully and be realistic and honest with yourself about how much you can handle. If you have days where you know you're going to be working long, hard days at work, maybe schedule less writing time on those days, or maybe take one day off every week of your writing and do something else, some sort of activity you find fun. Go for a hike, play some video games, play a board game, watch Netflix, whatever it is that you do to relax and decompress. These mental breaks are so important for our productivity. Think of it this way, you want to get in your car and just start driving and plan to drive 2,000 miles non-stop, would you? No, you understand that at certain points along the way, you're going to have to pull over and refuel your car. And we, as writers, are really not all that different from cars. We need to refuel as well. Now the fuel that we need varies a little bit for each of us. Uh, for myself, last year I like to take one night um, every week, jump on the PlayStation, and uh, play some violent shoot 'em up video games with some friends of mine. That's what helped me decompress and helped me be more productive the other six days of the week. Now I had to write more words during those days on average to make up for these days, and that's something you need to be aware of, but for me the trade-off was worth it. I was more easily able to meet my goal because I gave myself this time off. So maybe make a list of a few things that you do outside of writing that really help you decompress and relax. And try to schedule a little bit of time for some of these things when you're making your calendar for NaNoWriMo. I think you're going to thank yourself for it by the end of the month. Again, this isn't going to guarantee that you're going to hit the 50,000 words. Nothing can do that. But I think it is likely to guarantee that the month of November is a lot more pleasurable for you. One quick bit of prep work I want to touch on, and this is going to be very brief, is deciding whether or not you want to use the official NaNoWriMo website to track your work. And if you do, just make sure you have your account set up in advance and all ready to go. So that when November 1st rolls around and you have your first writing session, you can get right out there, put your words out there. You don't have to bother with making an account at that time. One of those things that's just better to get out of the way early and then you don't have to worry about it in November. Take stress off yourself in the future. And remember, you don't necessarily have to use their website if you don't want to. If you want to track your progress on your own, that's perfectly fine. Some people find it useful to use the website to track their progress and to share with their friends. But if that's not you, there's no big deal about that. So I wasn't planning on this being an overly long episode, but I want to dive into one last piece of advice that I have, and then I'm going to turn you loose to go get started on your own NaNoWriMo prep work. One of the most challenging parts of the writing process is starting, and in order to start, I don't know about you, but I have to get into a creative mindset. And each of us does this a little bit differently, but I think we all have a pretty good idea of what works for us. So now, during the month of October, be thinking about these things and putting them into action. If Maybe reading in a certain genre, or watching a certain movie, or maybe even doing a certain type of exercise gets you into a more creative frame of mind. Now's the time to start. Now's the time to get yourself, get those creative juices flowing. It's a bit of a overused statement, but I think it really applies. You really want to be feeling creative when November 1st rolls around. 
As I said, we each do this in different ways, but think about what works best for you. Maybe you want to pick up a few highly reviewed books that are somewhat similar to what you plan on writing and read them for inspiration. Maybe you want to create a certain playlist that helps you feel creative when you listen to it. Maybe you want to select a few movies or TV shows that you think are going to help you get into the right frame of mind. There's no one way that's more valid than others. It's just about what works best for you. So, for myself, I'll give you myself as an example. Last year I wrote the third book of a trilogy for NaNoWriMo. So what I did during the month before was I went through and I did second drafts on the two books preceding it. Now that might not necessarily sound like the most fun, but it really helped get me into the right frame of mind to write that particular story. It helped to place myself in that world again, get to know those characters again, so that by the time November 1st rolled around, I was eager to get started. I couldn't wait to start putting words on the page. So again, just think about what works for you, whether that be reading books, doing certain activities, whatever it might be, and just start partaking in those activities throughout the month of November. Start filling the glass. Fill your own uh, creative gas tank would be one way to put it, so that when you need that fuel in the middle of November, it's there for you. One thing that I would recommend anyone at least give a try is get outside a little bit. Take some walks outside. Just, just spend time in the great outdoors. It always helps me feel a little bit more creative to be outside, especially at this time of year when the temperature is starting to drop, the leaves are changing. It's a great time to get outdoors and it can be really invigorating. And for me that helps my creativity. It might not work for you, but if you've never tried it, I would recommend at least giving it a shot. All right, I'm going to throw the plug in. If you're by chance writing a fantasy novel and would like a fun fantasy read to hopefully inspire you for the month of November, my debut novel, The Path of the Raw Wielder, is now available and can be found in the description below. I'm sorry, but you got to get the plug in wherever you can, right? So I think you can tell, just by the length of this episode, that preparing for NaNoWriMo doesn't necessarily need to be a complicated thing. There are just a few very simple and straightforward steps you can take that are going to propel, well hopefully, propel you to success in November. There's no guarantees of course. But maybe by taking some of these actions in the month of October, you're giving yourself a really good shot. And there's nothing quite like that feeling on November 30th when you hit that 50,000th word, or you finish that first draft and you can't believe you just wrote a whole book in one month. It's a really rewarding feeling. And honestly, I'm a little jealous of you that are going to get to experience that this year. Oh man, I'm sitting here right now thinking, God, I'd love to be doing NaNoWriMo this year. Of course, then I think about how I felt about November 20th of last year, and you know what? It's, it's a slog at times, guys. I'm just going to put that out there. There are times when you're going to hate yourself. You're going to think, why am I doing this to myself? And you know, maybe it's not for you. But give it a try. Give it a try. Everyone, I believe that almost any writer has the capacity to win NaNoWriMo. But you'll never know if you do or don't until you try. So... Get out there and give it a shot. So as a quick reminder, our next episode is going to be in two weeks. And we're going to be talking again about NaNoWriMo, but that's going to be focused more on um, finding success during NaNoWriMo, actually during the month of November. Things you can do on a day-to-day -day basis during NaNoWriMo that will hopefully help propel you towards success. This was more so the prep work episode and the next episode will be more the nitty-gritty of 
what you're going to want to do during NaNoWriMo. And I'm going to aim to make that another fairly quick episode too, just because, hey, you're preparing. You don't have time to sit around and listen to a 50-minute podcast. So with that, I think it's about time to wrap this one up. Thank you so much for listening today. Uh, If you have questions, comments, feedback for the podcast, the website is PeteBeal.com. It's linked in the description below every time. Please go out, send me a message, reach out. I'm willing to read any uh, comments you have on the podcast if you would like. Thinking about doing uh, maybe a show of comments and questions from listeners in the near future. So it would obviously help to have those if you want to send them in. I'd be happy to answer them. So with that, dear listeners, we're going to wrap up this episode of the Future So Right podcast. It's been my pleasure, and I hope you have enjoyed it. If you did like the content, please make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for future content. If you did not enjoy the content today, feel free to go out to the website and leave me a comment, or leave me a nasty comment down below. Although I can't imagine you would have made it this far if you didn't enjoy the content. So please, stay safe, stay healthy, stay creative, and always keep writing. Until next time, thank you.